Hey guys, what is up? Taz McCaffrey here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are almost wrapping up our seven part series on how to make daily sales. And today's topic, which is day number six, it is, give me a drum roll, list desirable items. Could you imagine like this is like one of my biggest tips, one of my biggest secrets to making daily sales. It's actually listing things that people want. What do I mean when I say this? Do you know what people are looking for right now? Do you know trendy colors, styles, fabric types, material types? This could be like dependent on season. The more knowledge you have in these, the more power you have when you're outsourcing. And a lot of this can also depend on your business model too. If you're aiming for a high sell-through rate, you definitely want to take all of these factors into consideration when you're outsourcing. When I first started, my sell-through rate was probably like 50 to 60%. That was based on what I sold in a month and now I think I run probably around 85 to 90 percent. My closet floats between 350 and 450 items. I never, I, I rarely, I don't say never, but I, I don't feel like I consistently can break over 450 and that's just because my items sell. So as many as I can list, usually I sell and probably like the bottom 150 items in my closet are just like old stuff that I used to source, things that I probably wouldn't pick up now if I was out looking for items. That being said, with my 350 to 450, my small business also grosses uh, usually around 5,000 a month, which is pretty good. Obviously I have to take off cost of goods from there and my fees. For running a business in two to three days a week, I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good net profit still. We're gonna break down some different parts to how you find desirable items and how you start listing desirable items in your closet. The first thing I want to talk about, and we've we've discussed this in other videos, is just researching solds. It, depending what platform you're selling on, you can look up solds on different ones. I typically use Poshmark as my benchmark, and that's only because I sell majority of my items on Poshmark. If I was selling my items on eBay and that was like my main platform, then I would be definitely searching my sold comps on eBay. Next one is gonna be check comparative or comp pricing before purchasing items. I check every single item that is a brand name. If it's not vintage or quirky or unique or like I'm picking it up for those factors, and if everything else I search and if the comparative pricing, like the comparative solds don't look that great or they don't fit maybe what my profit margin what I'm shooting for then I'm not picking them up I don't care how cute it is how much I like it how much it's something I wish I had in my closet if it doesn't make sense money wise I don't grab it be ahead of the seasons usually I'll start listing my summer stuff in spring my spring stuff I'll probably start listing next month I usually like to be two months ahead of the season this way when everyone starts to think about the weather changing I already have all my listings put up. I know like people will list their seasonal stuff all year round and I kind of do the same thing, but I typically am not listing shorts in December. It's just not something I do. Up here in Canada, it's cold. <laughs> There's snow, it's freezing. I try and save it for when I know people are like looking the most. Everyone does things differently. This is just how I do things in our business. The next one would be follow and watch fashion influencers. I've said this before. I feel like a broken record so many times, but they give away so many tips. They literally are telling you what's trending, what they're buying, what they love for next season, and they tend to know what they're talking about. Grab as many tips as you can for free through social media off of them. I also shoot for items that sell over 40 to $45. The higher the better. You can actually filter your solds by this. So if you're in Poshmark and you're looking up sold pricing or like sold items, you can filter it to be over $50. And that's typically what I'm doing. I'll select that 50 to 100, 100 to 250. I can't even remember how they break down, but I'll like select them all. You can actually do research in the 100 plus category if you want, depending on what kind of item it is. The next thing I want to talk about is check your items over before buying them. If I happen to thrift a damaged item from like Value Village or Savers Club, I will return it with my receipt and they don't do cash back, but they will allow an exchange. I find now that I 
pay up for a lot of my items and I'm paying, you know, more than $10 an item, I, I can't sit on damaged goods. Like I, I can't buy a bunch of damaged goods. I do my best to check them over. I feel like Value Village is probably the worst. I feel like if you're going to like a buy, sell, trade or a consignment store, they typically are checking for these flaws prior to purchasing from someone. To have Value Village is just kind of throwing them out there. So make sure you're checking that. That being said, I shoot to only thrift next to new condition or like very good condition. I try not to put a lot of extra time into my items, maybe a lint roll, a sweater shave. That's about the extent of it. If I pick up something that has a stain, it was on accident because if I saw something stained in the store, I'm probably not grabbing it. It's not ideal for me to have to do stain removing on all of the items that I pick up. And the more time you spend on an item, the less money you're actually making on that item. Think about it that way. Next one. So get creative when sourcing. I like this one because I feel like I was stuck in a rut for sourcing for the longest time. And then I kind of like broaden my horizons and now I'm getting different goods from different sources. I don't share all of my sourcing methods because I feel like they're all available to everyone and they're easy to search and there's lots of information out there for you to make those choices. You can thrift, you can go to buy sell trades, you can go to consignments, you can do online, you can do retail arbitrage, you can do local donations like asking family and friends if they're going to donate their clothes. They can donate them to you first. You can buy wholesale liquidation and these are just like a few of the ways that you can uh, source clothing. Whatever works for you, I recommend trying different methods so that you can see, you know, what works best and depending where you are, you may have access to different type uh, types of local inventory. With that being said, I when people are like, oh, you're so lucky, you have this, or my thrift stores don't have this. Well, if your thrift stores don't have what you're looking for, then expand your sourcing horizons because we all have access to everything online. If I'm shopping online, there's nothing that I have that you can't have either, right? So you just have to get creative. Next one, let go of old inventory. For me, if something doesn't sell within three months, I'm probably gonna make some good deals on it with someone if they like the item. I shouldn't say three months because probably like even six months to a year, but definitely at three months, I'm gonna be giving good deals on stuff. I just wanna get the money back into my business. It does no good if I have 300 items sitting here that's just money sitting in inventory, right? Obviously, I wanna try and recoup my costs so I can buy more inventory. And if something isn't selling in, in three months, it's either poor pictures, overpriced or not that desirable and not saying that the right person isn't going to come along and buy the item it's not like that quick mover and that's what i base my my business model on is those quick movers keeping everything rotating through my closet and then the last one i want to talk about is i also do like to do bulk offers uh, like once a month of probably 30 to 40% off on old inventory. I like to move this stuff. Like I said, I don't like sitting on my inventory. My goal is to not have 100 items that don't sell. I want under 500 and I want all of them flipping and sort like rotating over at least every three months. This means I need to know what's selling currently and researching future trends. So there's like a whole pile of tips in here on how... I think you can go about looking for desirable items and some of the parameters that I set for my business when I'm looking for this type of inventory. I think that if you can focus on what actually sells and what people are looking for and what is selling on the platforms that you're selling on, I feel like you'll start to see a lot more sales. When I pick up things that have a high sell-through rate, I don't have to question them. I can buy 20 items and know that they're all going to sell within a month and then I have no problems paying up for an item as well. Like if I know something's going to flip and I'm going to make, you know, 30 or $40 off it within a month, that's cool. That's, that's totally fine with me. To me, that's better than having a bunch of inventory that I've paid a couple bucks for that's just sitting here taking up room because I don't got time for that. Okay, that wraps it up. And if this brings you value, give me a thumbs up, let me know. I hope these ideas help you. If there's anything you wanna add or things that you look for when you're looking for desirable items or any tips you wanna add into this, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Okay guys, I'm out of here. One more video coming in this series and I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>